Hey everyone, I just wanted to hop back on here and make a short and sweet video over the top three resources I used when applying to OT school and creating a priority list on what schools I wanted to apply to first and those that were lower on my priority list. You know, applying to grad school isn't easy and it's not cheap, so I kind of wanted to share my resources that I used when deciding what schools to apply to and how to narrow down that list. Now, if you don't already know, I have applied to OT school two times, so these top three resources were definitely something I missed out on the first time applying that I found um, when applying my second time. That definitely made the process a lot easier, so I thought that I would come on here and share those resources with you, and hopefully it'll help you all out as well, so let's get started. Okay, so the first resource I want to talk about is AOTA. AOTA is where you can find all of the currently accredited schools that are certified to be teaching occupational therapy. It is very important that you look and make sure that the program that you are applying to is currently accredited because there are some programs that are still currently working on that accreditation. So if they're not currently accredited and their um, accreditation, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, falls through, then that could potentially end you up in not a lot of trouble, but you know, it would mean that your time would be wasted if that program weren't to get fully accredited in the end. So if you want to go ahead and look up a specific program that's already accredited in your area, just to save you time and just to make sure that they're maintaining their current status to be able to teach occupational therapy, then that's what you need to do first. Like I said, I would just log on to AOTA.com. I looked up and I made sure um, I only planned to initially apply to the programs in Texas and I did look at a couple other programs out of state as well, but I went through um, the whole website to make sure that all of those programs were still accredited and if they were in the transitional process. So for those who don't know about the transitional process happening, I believe by 2027, um, I hope I'm not wrong on that year, but by 2027, I believe every master's occupational therapy program is mandated to switch over to their entry-level doctorate. So those programs are working on getting accredited to be able to make that transition. If not, then, you know, they will no longer be able to um, offer that occupational therapy degree to others. So, like I said, I could only speak to those programs in Texas, but there are programs that are currently transitioning. I believe we have one that has already made the transition and a lot of them are in that process. And it should say also on AOTA if that transition is currently happening or if they haven't made that transition yet. So make sure you go on, like I said, AOTA.com to make sure that your program is accredited and We'll just start from there. The second thing I did, which it kind of sounds redundant or, you know, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but I'm the type of applicant that likes to kind of rank and see what program is considered the best in the nation. And um, just so I kind of have a starting point as to where, you know, if I were to apply in Texas or out of state, what programs are either out of reach or more realistic for me and my candidate profile and just how to go about that. So I just one day randomly Googled, you know, best occupational therapy schools um, and it popped up with the U.S. News article. And so, I mean, everyone knows, you know, U.S. News does, um, you, you know, the top hospitals in the nation or the top doctors in Texas and, you know, it'll go and it'll rank. Well, they actually had a best occupational therapy schools um, list. And now this list was made back in 2016, which is outdated, you know, but still more current and was helpful to me in terms of, you know, at least where were those programs ranked um, three years ago. So what I did was <clears throat> 
I went in and I used the filter because you can filter through um, states and you know it'll pop up each program that you have there now the original list when you click on the website it'll just have you know uh, every program in the nation but you know if you only want to want to apply in state then you can definitely filter those other programs out so that's what helped me also did want to hop back in and say in terms of the US news ranking list you know rankings aren't everything it's definitely something that I thought I would want at first you know getting into the top school in Texas or you know the top school in the nation if that interests you um, but that definitely wasn't something that I took and ran with you know I weighed my options you know when I met the faculty when I went on my OT interviews and I'll get more in depth um, about that in another video but you know there were other factors that definitely weighed in um, you know not just where the programs ranked so I did kind of want to pop in and say that you know it's not everything but if you're wanting to find a place to start that's a good place to start the last resource I want to talk about is student doctor network again I wish I would have known about this the first time applying and I believe I found out about it probably at the end of my first cycle of applying to OT school but it is a network where you can search forums and it's made for um, post grads that are wanting to go back to graduate school to you know attain a higher level degree in healthcare you know there's dentistry on there there's um physical therapy there's man um well of course med students on there but you know there's also an occupational therapy thread on there too and what i found most helpful about it was you know people and applicants you know past and current are still active on there and conversating over you know um, how do my candidate or how do my statistics look in terms of my GPA, my GRE, you know, my observation hours, you know, any suggestions, you know, in terms to make my um, application more um, or to make my application stand out more, you know, what more can I do? And the community there was just awesome. I mean, everybody was willing to help everybody and give them the best advice possible. There... Are specific threads on there you know that pertains to conversations over certain universities so you know the pros and cons of certain universities uh, what else I'm trying to think also whenever the schools start interviewing um, past applicants or past uh, well yeah past applicants will come on and give suggestions you know um, in terms of what they believe helped them in their interview process and ultimately what got them accepted. So like I said, Student Doctor Network is just an amazing site that you can use to navigate that process. And you can go back on there. It has old candidate profiles. Look at what they had in terms of GPA, GRE. Compare them to yours and see if that's still current. Um, and yeah, just weigh your options like that. That's what helped me out and it was awesome. Oh, this is technically the top three resources I used. And the fourth resource I wanna talk about is um, something that I found just recently actually. Um, I didn't use it, but it was something that I kinda created my own template, um, but she did it for you. So OT Genius, she's awesome. You should follow her on Instagram. But she created a school um, profile that you can use. So it's like a template. She created a PDF so you can eventually print them out and then, you know, just run copies. Um, and, you know, it's a school snapshot, you know, that has the school name, uh, what the school considers a competitive GPA, GRE, uh, the amount of observation hours. And th that whole sheet you can also use to write down your prereqs and to see if your prereqs are also accepted by that program. It's awesome. I will also leave that link in the description box below.
So that was the top three resources I used when creating my school priority list and just a starting point to get applying to OT school. If you have any questions or if you're still wondering about a certain something that maybe I haven't covered yet, let me know. Let me know suggestions for future videos and how I can help. So good luck in the process and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.